Uh, hello, Miss May, and today I'm going to make a vlog about two different media sources that I have actually found a lot of very interesting similarities to. First off is the Voltaire novel Candide that you have it, had me read over these past two weeks. The second one was a favorite of mine, The Boondocks, an animated cartoon made from 2004 to 2010 about an African-American family struggling with their day-to-day -day lives. Now, on the surface, you'd think they wouldn't be that very similar. One is a written in the 15th, 16th century about a poor boy trying to find his struggle in the world. The other one is about uh, race relations with starring an African-American family. But I've actually found a lot of really interesting similarities. But the big thing is that I've noticed is that there is this big message both stories are trying to convey in a sense. The, it's a train of thought that everybody supposedly believes in the story except for a few. And while it does sound nice in theory, the belief is actually really wrong and is actually incorrect. For Candide, it's the idea that this is the best of all possible worlds. and. With the boondocks, it's the idea that slavery and segregation is over, that we are all created equal and society views us as such, that ever since the 60s, everything has been smooth and happy, when they clearly have not. <laughs> and the thing is with this story is, the main thing is that both sources seem to mock that stereotype and disprove it on almost every single level. With, and they each have different enforcers of these ideas. With Candide, the three big enforcers are the Catholic Church, the social class, and even philosophy. One of the main characters, uh, Pangloss, in the philosophy category, constantly spouts the idea and comes up with a false justification for it. One example is when he talks about, right after they've been shipwrecked, that the reason for the uh, harbor is so that they could all be shipwrecked and be taken care of. Another one is that, one of the more famous ones was that, the reason we have noses is so we can wear spectacles rather than w so we can smell or something like that. And the reason we have legs is so that we can wear britches. A lot of really illogical and obviously stupid ideas that many people would realize does not work. As for the class systems themselves and Candide, one of the big thing struggles is that Candide wants to marry his lover, Miss Cunegonde. But the problem is, the world is kind of saying, no, you can't marry her. She's a high-class baron. And even though you are rich beyond your wildest dreams later on, you can't marry him. Actually, one of the main antagonists is the, uh, is actually one of the men by the name, is actually Cunegonde's brother, who is a baron of another land, of the Jesuits. He's a lord. And he constantly himself says, you cannot marry him. A low-crass nobody like you cannot marry my sister, even though the dude is richer, more powerful, and technically as a captain of the of the Spanish army, he technically has a lot more going for him. And the, Catholic, and the big thing is that it's also mocking this Catholic church, who at the time, during Voltaire's time, had really been enforcing the idea of the best of all possible worlds. And blind optimism, more famously in the earthquake in Portugal and Madrid where everybody was dying and the Pope was like, eh, there's nothing under the world, this is for the best, that everything's gonna be okay, we have nothing to fear, and we do, we do have things to fear, we, the world isn't perfect, this isn't the way we do things. The same thing is with boondocks, it's constantly showing problems with our world and our own society that is dealing with the minority classes, those that are being manipulated in a sense. I mean, one of the more famous quotes from the show is, Jesus was black, Ronald Reagan was the devil, and the government is lying about 9-11, made by one of the main characters, Huey Freeman. And the three, and with that three quotes, it's pointing out three different problems with our society, and how our own lives are manipulated in a sense. Many people, when you say the term, Jesus was black, they might look at you kind of funny, even though in all logical sense, it would be 100% true. Jesus was indeed born in the Middle East. He was born in Israel, Jerusalem, in Bethlehem. And by all accounts, he should be Arabic or black. It's not that hard to believe when compared to Jesus being white. And yet for some reason, most media portrays Jesus as a white man, which I don't know if it's personal racism or just products of the time, but 
really? He should have been Arabic or black, probably. And the same thing is with the political systems. We're constantly lied to and given false promises. It's kind of the campaign system. I mean, there are some who do deliver on their promises, whether we want them to or not, enter the Donald jo Trump joke. But there, for the most part, are a lot of corrupt deals and a lot of uh, political lying and actual uh, misleadings in the in the uh, in the political system. Another really famous quote from the show is, "If we lie to the government, it's a felony. But if they lie to us, it's politics." And it's true. Take one of the take Trump's uh, current, well, former political rival during the election, Hillary Clinton. She was involved in multiple scandal, scandals, including the uh, Ukrainian, including uh, the Bosnian affair, the uh, and the fact and her secret server, which again is one of the main reasons why I personally did not vote for her. If she's allowed to just take to break rules like that, to break rules that again would get anyone else a class A felony, would be charged as a felon. I know people in the military who legitimately would be charged for felonies and sentenced to life at Rikers Island if they did what she did. Captains and generals in the military who would be put to prison for what she did. But she gets away scot-free. That makes no sense to me. And the media is the exact same way. It lies to us about things. I mean, they exemplify, they exaggerate, and they try to really, honestly, try to push things in certain ways. How many times have we heard scandals and the media seems to exaggerate the truth and downright lie to us. There was a really famous example where they edited clips in a certain newscast about a guy who had been who had been accused of raping a woman, actually. He had been accused of rape and when they interviewed about him, they actually edited his dialogue to make it seem as if he was actually admitting that he had raped her or that he was lying. They were extremely manipulative, especially in that certain newscast. Now, I'm not going to say which one that is, but it definitely was a manipulative cast. There was actually another case where four college students in a, a certain university were expelled because a woman accused them of rape. There was no proof, and they were eventually found innocent. But this entire time, they were accused of rape on very little proof on very and very little actual rights, but they were still kicked off the campus and treated guilty until proven innocent. And the media treat them as such. <laughs> Another, I mean, take the R. Kelly trials, or where another episode in the Boondocks, where they actually talk about it. Another really famous quote is that Huey actually says here that there are, well, forgive me, there are going to be some uh, profanities in here. Why are you acting so crazy? Yes, it's true that the, F, that the government tries to put away a lot of, incarcerate a lot of uh, innocent black men on innocent, on fellacious charges, but not R. Kelly. If you want to help R. Kelly, get him some therapy or counseling. Don't try to treat him like a hero. It's The entire episode is about the fact that they have a mountain of proof and evidence, including an actual tape, a confession, and the actual victim admitting she was 14 at the time and she actually did have sexual intercourse with R. Kelly. And they, he still got off. This political systems and the media that way, they manipulated it to where it was actually not exactly his fault, and they, and the lawyer actually didn't use any actual shred of evidence disproving that it was him, but instead manipulated the people into thinking that the that the main that the uh, prosecutor, Mr. Dubois, was actually trying to be a racist and actually a an R. Kelly hater, which shouldn't even be a problem with it, but he manipulated the, the jury to say that they all decided to, that they went through a, a blatant example of jury nullification, where their favor and love of R. Kelly prevented him from receiving the justice that he deserved, which was having sex with a minor, specifically, forgive me, a urination intercourse, unfortunately. And... It's very much similar to that of Candide, but there are a lot of injustices that happen in the system. Multiple times, Candide is punished for just being around people that have different views. Pangloss was 
hanged for try for just saying that this is the best of all possible worlds because because he did not view what they wanted to view. He was he again he is always crapped on because he's a lower class class and he cannot do what he pleases. He's cheated. He's lied to. He's left alone trying to find a way to find his own way, but he can't because the world constantly tries to manipulate him. It's a satire of that idea of this is the best of all possible worlds, just like Boondocks. They're both proving point for point that this is not the best of all possible worlds, that seg segregation and slavery do exist in one way or another, that this world still does need problems, still has problems and needs to be solved. How do they solve it? Well, they both take two different ways to solve it, in a sense. And the big thing, though, is that you have to accept the truth, in a sense. You have to accept what exactly is going... You have to understand the truth about the world and, and accept the lies for what they are. You can't exactly keep living your life with the idea that slavery and segregation is over when there still are problems with slavery and segregation, just as you cannot accept the fact that this is... the idea that this is the best of all possible worlds, that there, that nothing really is for the worst, that there, that nothing really bad happens and everything works out in the end. Because sometimes it doesn't. There are people who, unfortunately, meet their ends through no fault of their own. It just happens. I personally lost my father in a car crash, and my sister was honestly left brain damaged, mentally handicapped, and currently is barely able to speak and can't walk and can barely move our arms and legs even after two years it's frankly really hard to get through honestly but the way that these shows and the book work through that the, the ultimate thesis is that even though these classes are deluding us there is a way out of it we can accept we don't have to accept these uh, lies and just live through them we can change them the biggest thing with Candide, the final line is literally, yes, this may be the possible best of all possible worlds, but we must cultivate our garden. And what I think Voltaire means with that is we need to find a way to improve our world. The way we can make this the best of all possible worlds isn't just accepting that it is. We have to realize that this world is broken and that we do live in an imperfect world. But by working on how ways to improve it, we can make it all the better and all the more livable. And it's true without the entire with the book itself. The reason Candide is able to continue to find happiness is when he realizes that is when he realizes that at the end of the day, things can work out. Things can find a way to truly understand everything. And things do work out. And the th same thing with the boondocks. The message they tr always try to show out is the idea that the way to improve things is to understand it and to fight it. The way to stop slavery and segregation is for us to better understand ourselves. One of the more important quotes is, the, fear, the reason we fear God is because we don't understand them. Therefore, the reason that we can find a way to actually, therefore, by understanding them, we get knowledge, and therefore fear is removed. The same thing here. The better we understand our world and the better we learn about it and find ways to improve it, the better off we will be. Candide is not saying that this world is terrible. Quite the contrary. He points out many good things. There's, of course, El Dorado, a city of utopia. There's beauty in it. There is a lot of good things in it. People can find happiness. But it's not perfect. Bad things still do happen. So we need to find a way to improve it. The same thing with the boondocks. They admit there are a lot of really good things about African American culture, and, and they can do some amazing things. One of their quotes is literally, there is nothing more dangerous than an educated and well-minded African American. And they admit there are ways to improve your situations. There have been improvements. The thing is, we still have a ways to go before we can reach that idea of perfection. And that's what they're asking for, to accept the fact that there this world isn't perfect, but then realize we can improve it.